Okay, we've gone ahead and completed our mud mixture here along the uh, fascia, blending the, the, the edge of the fascia into the uh, foreground scenery. We'll go ahead and use a lot more of this mud later on when we work on this area and um, filling in some of the scenic, scenic gaps that we'll deal with. Um, this area here is a transition situation. We've got the flat mill area, which is the featured scene here, but then we've got a transition into this strange sort of box and then the tracks disappear into a, a, a hole in the wall and into the next town. So what we need to do is transition the scenery from the mill out into the woods. In order to do that, we're going to, have to, we're going to use a material called florist foam, this green material here. The two kinds of foam I use in scenery construction, the one that everybody else uses, which is the typical um, extruded pink styrofoam, which is great for subcontours. Um, but for, for actual forest scenes, I like to use the um, florist foam because it's designed to hold plants and fl uh, flowers and things like that. So there's really, you know, you don't have to drill holes or use glue or anything like that. You simply make your trees and stick them in. No matter how small they are, they go right in and they're held in place. You don't need to worry about securing them. So when you need, you're going to do an area that requires dozens and dozens of these trees, it's a real time saver to use this material. Of course, we're going to paint this and add leaves and dirt and all that. I've put this together to kind of show you uh, how, what the process entails. It's pretty simple. You're going to take chunks of this uh, florist foam and cut it with any sort of a snap saw. You don't just have to give it a slice and then you know score it and snap it it comes apart really cleanly um, you also need a tool to carve it and this knife actually works pretty well for that so I've gone ahead and stacked some pieces of styrofoam up here and hot glue them together with a hot glue gun just to create a, a hillside which rises pretty sharply from the edge of the track here up into the hill up into the woods um, we'll go ahead and carve this down to, to create some better contours here uh, some softer contours. In addition, we've got a situation here with a 90 degree bend here. Um, you know, with this seam, we have to deal with that. What we need to do is blend this scene that's actually on the photo backdrop into the 3D scenery over here. So we're going to continue this ridge line, and later on we'll paint that, and then fill this in with trees to blend these two. We'll use some trees to hide this joint here. Okay. So we've got foam glued in. We'll continue to add pieces of foam. Now obviously this is, in, this is not good here. This is too, uh, too square and too, too sharp an angle. So we need to soften that up. Um, just take, again, take a knife, kind of cut away at this, scrape it, use the edge of the knife. It's nice to have a vacuum handy as well tends to fly everywhere. But unlike the extruded foam, which sticks to everything when you cut it, this stuff just kind of falls. So, pretty nice. starting to soften this contour a little bit. We'll continue to do that process. Um, we're going to go all the way into the corner here, and then we've got to do something here in the foreground. There is a switch back here, a couple of turnouts which need to be reached. They're not powered, they're manual, so I can't, we can't have a big hillside in front of us. So we'll have a gradual, um, you know, knoll here that will, uh, you know, hide this and, and basically put the tracks into a little bit of a valley here, but we don't want to go too high. So the, uh, the thought here is that the terrain is rising in this direction. So we'll go from here up to here. And we'll fill in in this back corner as well. Um, so when we get done with our scenery, uh, excuse me, our foam contours, when everything is secured and in place and carved to the proper shape, uh, we'll go ahead and cover that with, uh, with our dirt and we'll fill in some gaps with the mud we had used 
over here. This is, the mud is terrific for filling in gaps in the foam, which you simply can't get to otherwise. Um, so let's keep, uh, we'll continue to work on this and we'll come back and start to add some uh, ground cover. Okay, we've finished our project with the, uh, the floral foam here. We've created a nice gradual uh, hillside up into what would be the forest here. And we've created a nice gradual cut here, uh, blended the two nicely. Um, the next step, before we go into the uh, full-blown ground cover with dirt and leaves and trees and things like that, we're going to go ahead and plug up some of these holes here. You can see there's lots of gaps from where we cut the foam. Uh, there's also seams along the, these uh, longer pieces of, of florist foam. We'd want to uh, fill those in and create, and create uh, less of a jagged situation here. So we've got a little bit of our mud left over, and we're just going to take it, again, nice and stiff mixture, and simply plug these holes. Just spread the mud into the crevice. about it. There's another gap here. Pull that in. Try not to get too much of the mud on the foam, just, just fill in the crevice because we don't want to fill in the surface of the, uh, of the florist foam because that's where we're going to be planting trees. So if we fill that in with mud, we won't be able to plant through that. So just keep the mud isolated to where the uh, most obvious gaps are that need to be filled in. You get little pieces of foam pulling off and mixing in with the mud, that's not a problem at all. This could have used one final vacuuming before we started this process, but that's okay. Again, this uh, emphasizes uh, or underscores the importance of keeping this mixture very, very firm uh, because you want to have this ability to work it and use it to fill in gaps so it has structural integrity. If this was too wet a mixture, this simply wouldn't work. Okay, that seam is nicely filled. We got a little bit of a transition right here. You can see here where the pink uh, extruded styrofoam cuts off and then goes into the uh, this bit of mud. We're going to transition this a little bit. Keep this a minimum of a you know an eighth inch thick. You don't want to create, especially when you're going over raw uh, extruded styrofoam. You don't want to have this too thin. It will peel up, especially if it's a little more on the wet side. So keep it you know an eighth of an inch or so. It's between a sixteenth and an eighth. Let's say that at least to keep you safe. Obviously, we've got some holes in here. Fill those in. And continue to do that all along here. Bring some, uh, bring some mud down here and gradually pull this down. Um, and that'll be it. The next step will be to paint the foam and to apply uh, our final ground cover, which would be dirt, leaves, and trees. And then we'll go ahead and do the same for the mill area as well.